So this is just a quick uh, guide to some of the features in the um, in the color management system in Maya 2016. And there are just three or four settings that you that you need to understand uh, so that you know how to use them and override them if necessary. Uh, the first place that we want to go is the uh, the preferences window. Uh, and down here you see a category called color management. And you want to make sure that that's, that's uh, checked on. Uh, if you bring in a file from an older version of Maya, uh, the default for that would be off. But any new file that you create in Maya 2016, that's going to be turned on. So the first section that we find is the color transform preferences. Um, and the first one is the rendering space. This is what happens when you batch render. So when you batch render, this is going to go to the scene linear Rec 709 uh, sRGB. I think that's the default, but you also have the choice of, uh, um, of any of these um, color spaces. The Rec 2020, I think, is, the, is a broader color space that's used for, um, for broadcast. Uh, and the ACES CG is, uh, is one that's used for film. So we could talk about that uh, in a little bit, but I, I typically leave this at Rec 709 sRGB. That's what you would see on a JPEG, and that's what, what is, is, um, uh, is typically used on a, on a computer man monitor. So again, the rendering space is your batch render. The view transform is what you're going to see uh, in your, um, in your uh, perspective view. Um, so if I set that to sRGB, uh, you can see that, uh, that right here in my, in my view, um, I'm viewing this at sRGB gamma. Now, I can override this in either place. So if I want to see this in, um, in a raw um, uh, view, uh, you can see it gets darker. And the raw view is what we would see, what we used to see in, in Maya 2015 and before. Um, but you can set that to 2.2, or you could go to the ACES um, gamma space or, or whatever. So again, I usually leave that at sRGB because that's kind of what I'm used to. Uh, note that if I change this uh, in the preferences window here, it also changes it in the, um, in the viewport. So, so either one of those will override and, and, and you can kind of change them on the fly. I'm going to change that back to sRGB. When I do a test render here, uh, in my render view window, I also have a control that will allow me to, uh, to change the gamma. So, you know, with this drop down menu, I can control the gamma to, um, you know, to a raw image uh, with no correction. I can change it to the sRGB, which is where it was set, um, or I can use the, um, you know, any, any setting I want here, you know, including the ACEs and so forth. Uh, incidentally, this um, uh, this control is also controlled by um, by my render settings. So when I bring my render settings in here, the view transform here is set to R sRGB, and that matches the default position of um, of my test render. So if I change in the preferences to a raw image, for example, that's also going to change my test uh, test image to a uh, to a raw. Now, when you when you save this, let's say I save this to an S, if I if I have this set to sRGB and I go to File Save Image, uh, if I if I click in the Options box here, I can save this as a raw image or I can save it as a color managed image. So if I want that sRGB gamma to be built in here, I would use the Save Color Managed. Uh, if I want to adjust this in post. I would save that as a raw image and then adjust the gamma in Nuke or Photoshop or After Effects or you know wherever I want to wherever I want to do that. Now um, going back to the um, uh, the render preferences here, um, if I'm going to be doing a batch render, um, I'm going to be rendering to this um, uh, to this uh, scene linear Rec 709, but I can also override that down here in this section. Uh, where it says apply an output transform to renderer and that's really just a uh, an adjustment so if I want my renders to be sRGB um, then I would check this on and make sure that that's set to sRGB 
Uh, so that's for rendering right out of the box. If you want to just take your Maya renders and, uh, and use them with no post-production color management, this is what you would do. Um, if you wanted to do all your um, color management in post, you would set that to raw and you get those darker images. So, you know, I think the value of this uh, is that you can, you can do all your test rendering uh, so that it looks correct on your monitor, but if you're ultimately going to be going out to film, you can apply an ACES output transform so that what you see on film will match what you see on your monitor. And that's really what the, um, what the purpose of all this is. One final word about uh, color management is that we have to deal with uh, any file textures coming in. Um, so if you're going to be using a file texture to, uh, to apply you know, as a texture map, uh, you need to tell Maya uh, what the color space being used in that, um, in that file texture is. So uh, again, in the, um, in the preferences, um, you have this add image color space, add image input color space. That's set to sRGB. Um, you can set that to anything else, uh, just like we did before. Um, typically, if you're using something that came from a digital camera, that's already, you know, a JPEG or a ping, that's already been managed um, coming out of the camera. So um, it's, it's probably likely that you'll set the input color space to an sRGB. Uh, in the event that you have an image that is, um, that's not sRGB, that would be the exception to that rule, um, you can change that in the hypershade window. So um, in my hypershade here, um, I have a, um, a, uh, a file texture uh, right here. It's just, um, I just took this picture here. When I open up the image here, you can see that I have a, um, a, uh, a section here where I can change the color space. So if, you know, 80% of my images are sRGB, but I bring in one raw image, I can change the raw image. Um, ultimately, what Maya is doing is it's removing all of the processing from that image. So it would, if I tell Maya that it's dealing with an sRGB image, uh, and um, then then what will happen is it will um, it will remove that gamma correction from the image, treat it as a raw image, and then when I do my final render, then I do my post processing, and that avoids the problem of of um, gamma correcting an, an outside image twice, which would, you know, kind of blow out all the colors.